Hello, my faith walkers. Welcome back to my channel. Hoping you all can hear me at the moment. I have the fan running, and then I have a window here where uh, cars and whatnot come by. But um, I just wanted to come back and share that which um, was on my spirit to share. Um, I had an incident that went on um, in my um, presence. And it was a teenager, and they came, and they um, said that they were kicked out of the house. Well, I wasn't aware of what was going on at that moment. I was actually in the bathroom trying to get ready because I knew I had to go somewhere at that time. Uh, one of my family members was, were going to come and pick me up. So I was getting prepared for that. And, um, you know, as I was preparing, I, um, the knock came on the door, and, you know, I was told about, you know, what was going on. So, excuse the noise, because I think that's a vacuum cleaner or something. And I hope still that you can hear me. The door is closed. Um, but um, I wanted to come on because God was pressing me into sharing this, um, you know, about obedience and about listening, you know, and, you know, the things of God and that, I guess, whomever he's saying, you know, and it was like a lesson within, a lesson when, um, when this person arrived, uh, you know, at my door. So, um, you know, the person, they were distraught, you know, teenager. And um, they um, did not know, like I said, what, you know, what to do. Because they said they were kicked out of the house. So um, it's important also to have discernment. Um, if you don't have it, just ask God for it. And the Holy Spirit, they would definitely give it to you, Yeshua. Um... So as um, I was contemplating, you know, I was praying within myself um, to the Spirit and, you know, was asking the Lord and the Holy Spirit, what shall I do with this uh, young girl? And um, I just, you know, kept waiting, you know, for a decision uh, to be made. And um, I went on and asked her, could I have a word of prayer with her? And I prayed with her, and, um, you know, because she was shaking and, you know, doing different things of that nature, and, um, you know, I, I was asking, I said, um, you know, are you okay, and whatnot, and she was just saying, you know, how she has anxiety, and, you know, different things of that nature, like I said, so I went on, and I prayed for her, and um, as I prayed for her, not giving myself the glory, but prayer changes things, and uh, the word speaks, the prayers of the righteous avail much, so I prayed, and she, uh, after I prayed for her, she calm down, you know, the shaking and all that, you know, stopped and whatnot, and she, you know, you know, came around a bit more, so, so after that, um, I continued praying, I continued to wait around, and I heard, heard the Spirit say wait, because I was about to, um, take things, you know, in my hands, and you know, in action, <clears throat> and that's why there, again, it's important, uh, not to take things in your own hands, but, um, we have a Heavenly Father up above and the Holy Spirit and Yeshua to direct and lead and guide our path. So, um, you know, in my spirit, it was to go and um, call the authorities, right? But I just heard my spirit just wait. So um, I waited and I even called, like, just to make sure. I think this was after, though. I don't want to run ahead of myself. I waited for. A family member was supposed to come, like I said, and pick me up. We, had, I had things to do that day, um, and um, they came, and um, I had to talk with the, the, uh, the one of my family members. And <clears throat> I said, I have a situation here. I, you know, it's like I can't leave right now. Um, and uh, I let them know. I said, um, you know, I have this teenager here, and she said she's been kicked out of her house. And I want to be able to care for her. I said, but I know in these type of situations, you probably sh I probably should tell someone or you know, call someone, but I am talking to you about it. So they said to me, my family member said to me, said, we deal with these things all the time at my job and whatnot, you know, this, that, and the third, and said that, um, yeah, it would be appropriate to call uh, the authorities because that's what I was going to do. I didn't want to do it, but that was on my spirit to do. And I let them know that. And um, even though it was on my spirit to do, I did not want any type of <clears throat> action to be drawn, 
you know, towards us, you know, but, you know, some things are out of our hands that we can't, you know, do anything about. Our position is to do what is best to do, you know, through prayer and whatnot, supplication, right? It said to make our requests be made known unto God. So, um, it's not always something that you want. It's, you know, something that we have to do as far as, you know, getting to know <coughs> or make that decision, um, you know, to bring clarity and whatnot to whatever it is that, you know, we need to go, like the next step, you know, forward to move by, right? So, um, as they were saying that, and they were uh, saying different things to me, talking to me, my family member about, you know, the situation, I said, well, that's what I was thinking about doing. That's what was in my spirit to do. I said, but I did not want, um, you know, to, if I didn't do it, for it to fall back on me, for me to not to call the authorities, for it to fall back on me, because if you don't sometimes do the right thing, sometimes things can fall back on you, right? So um, that's the same thing as being obedient, is, you know, listening to the voice of God and, you know, and the Holy Spirit to speak to you as to let you know what it is to do instead of taking things and matters in your own hands. It was like a lesson to me, for real. Um, and even the authorities, because we have an authority, authority figure up there in the kingdom, which is God, the Holy Spirit, and Yeshua, right? So we are to abide by um, the spirit of, of God, right? And the authorities of him, uh, as we, a lot of people say, you know, um, you know, Jesus take the wheel, like he's our pilot, he's not the co-pilot, he is the pilot, and I've seen someone else's video that said that, and that's true, he's not the, the co-pilot, he is the pilot himself, you know, he's the one that drives, and, um, <coughs> and runs, uh, and moves everything, right, so, you know, there was a point in time where I need to allow God to take the wheel, so that he can, you know, literally drive this thing for me, right, so, um, um, we went through all that, and finally, um, you know, my, one of my family members said, well, um, cause I had went back in the house, um, or beside the house rather to call the authorities and, uh, my family member was like, well, you know, can she come in, you know, and the enemy had been messing with me about all that, you know, and I'm, I'm a heart, I'm a, I have a heart like full of compassion, which is, you know, God had that given me, we all should, if we all have God and Holy Spirit and Yeshua within us, we're supposed to have that compassion like Him. We're supposed to have that, like, that, the characters of God, right? We took, you shall know them by their fruits, right? So that's the fruits of the Spirit of God that we should carry, right? Compassion. So I do, I have compassion within my heart. I just, I didn't know what at that time what to do. And there again, when it says, be ye also ready, you know, to know, what it is that to you know we need to do when these souls or whomever come around that's needing us, you know, can't back out and say, well, we, you know, I'm not ready now, you know, because we've been praying uh, for these things and we've been tried and tested, you know, in our secret places of these things, right? So, um, at the moment, I go. What I told my family member said, yes, she can go into the house. You know, I'm a skeptic, but she is a kid. You know, you know, I am an adult. And, um, you know, she's in rare, you know, desire need right now. So um, I did, and I called the authorities, uh, which is what I didn't want to do, of course, because I know a lot of people don't like authorities, right? But I did go over it with uh, the teenager that these are things I'm going to have to do. I said, because I want to care for you. I said, but at the point in time, at the moment, um, the caring part is um, for you, the way I would like to care for you is out of my hands, out of my jurisdiction. So I'm going to have to allow the authorities to do so, right? So every time I would say something about the authorities, um, of course, you would break down and cry. And um, I understand, you know, no one wants the authorities, you know, to come, right? But they are um, a figure of, uh, of discipline and you know, and all those things is a word that I'm trying to figure out because, I mean, I'm trying to connect it out with the Lord, period, you know, because he is our authority figure and whatnot, and, you know, uh, disciplinary, right, you know, to to guide or whatever way that, you know, they know to implement, you know, whatever plan 
that comes next. So, because we can't, we can't do that. But I mean, it speaks in the Bible that you know we should obey the laws of the land as well, right? Just like God's laws up in heaven that He's created, we gotta obey His laws as well. So, all of that connects, you know, together um, as um, uh, a woman of God or or, or or people of God, or you know, period. So, um, I um, let her know that you know these are things that have to take place. You know, I said if it, oh, if it was up to me. I would go ahead and care for you myself. I mean, you know, especially if she didn't have no type of family or whatever around, right? So, um, this person also, you know, was dealing with foster care and different things of that nature. And uh, kids in foster care, you know, have a lot of drama. They have a lot of trouble that follows them. Not saying that they're bad kids themselves. They're not. But, um, you know, if you are, for, are a foster parent and you're caring for a child, don't go in uh, caring for a child uh, just for the money, you know, just for the finances, you know, just for the cash flow, you know, uh, just for freedom, financial freedom. Do it because you have a heart of God or have a heart period in love and have compassion for that that uh, that kid. There's, uh, like I said, there's a lot of trauma that things that follow uh, um, those foster uh, children, right? You know, and, and then, you know, I'm hearing that, um, um, at the time, the things that the, the, the kid deals with about how they, they were like their parent, you know, and all that you're going to, you're going to be just like, you know, your parent was and, you know, this, that, and the third and whatnot. This, these are the things that should not be as far as with these children, even if they're not foster care uh, children, our children or whoever else's children, be careful what you say and what comes out of your mouth, because whatever you, whatever that comes out of your mouth can backfire uh to you when you say this because it's like you're cursing it's time now to break these curses and, and the curses are being broken but uh it's like you're cursing that individual but it just as you say you curse that individual you're cursing putting that curse back on yourself because who who lives within us is the holy spirit god and yeshua so whether you know it or not when we do things they feel it you know he said, abiding me is abiding you, right? So if we're abiding in Christ, Christ can feel everything that we do, just like our temple, it says, is the temple of the Lord. You have to be careful what you do with it, what you put in it, what you even put on it, you know? And I can go on and on and on, but um, it's true. It's true when you're dealing with uh, the Lord and the Holy Spirit um, and when you're dwelling, uh, you know, within his, his and their will, it has to be what Christ's um, character, you know, would be, and his heart would be. So, getting back, uh, explaining everything to her and about the foster care and all of that uh, of that nature. Um, God uh, entrusts us, and this is what I'm feeling here. God entrusts us adults uh, with these children because these children are gifts from God. From above, he gave them to us. He said, "Every good thing come, every good gift comes from above, right?" So, um, we ought to treat these kids like, um, and that's the golden rule. Rule, treat them like you want to be treated, right? That's the golden rule in the Word of God. So, uh, um, getting back yeah to um, you know fostering and even not fostering. Um, these children did not ask to be here. God has a plan for every last one of our lives. And I'm thinking this was coming to me as well. These foster children, when they go through the things that they go through, um, just like sinners, period, when they get out there and they do um, wild things and, you know, they go off in, you know, the devil's camp or whatever. Most of the time, as I said, 10 out of 10, these children are chosen. And they're going through these things for a reason, and they may not even know why they're going through them, you know, the situation, and, but they are, and they're going through it because of uh, the purpose that they have or that God has for them and for their lives. So I didn't even know I was going to come up and say all of this because um, I did not know how to reiterate none of this uh, today. Today is, um, in fact, um, February um, the 3rd, no, the 14th which is Wednesday, and I wanted to get this uh, video out because God was impressing on me to be obedient, to listen, 
and that's what I kept hearing, and I kept hearing uh, as well the other day. Well, actually, I, would, I kept hearing that as well um, about being obedient, listening, and um, you know how people are are attached to you, and it's not about us. And and I was praying, you know, about Father to allow uh, self and um, uh, the flesh to die, you know, decrease and decrease, you know, to just totally get rid of it, you know, and um, allow you, Christ, Yeshua, uh, the Holy Spirit, and and the Father to um, expand in my life, you know, to like overshadow me, you know, let me kind of be hidden from out of myself and you all to pour over me, overflow over me, you know, as well as through me. So um, going all the way back um, from false care and all that, uh, I wanted to expand on it and I, I'm glad I did. I didn't want to go too far out though, but coming back, uh, as I allow um, the girl to explain to her of everything that uh, you know I want or I could do and you know whatnot, um, she took it well. But when I said something about the authorities, she started crying, and um, she did this like two or three times. So I think uh, I think I believe it was when I got in the house or whatever. That's when I started to discern. It's like, well, this has happened before. So when the authorities came, um, and she just kept saying, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. I'm tired. I'm tired. And um, you don't know what a, a, a kid, like I said, is going through. You don't know how much they can handle. Only God knows. But it behooves us to, you know, help them through every situation. Like I said, because they're, they're not always um, asked to be here. God uh, appointed them to be here, of course. Um, and of course the way they come in all the time is not, you know, it's not, um, what God, um, anticipated, but he makes everything, um, you know, to our good, you know, uh, everything is not always right, good and perfect, but uh, he said all things work together for the good of them, you know, and, um, he turns situations around or what the enemy mean for evil. Uh, God turns around always and make it for good. So as he, she was in here and the authorities came, finally came, and um, they were saying, well, look, you can't, you know, you don't, you don't need to be doing this anymore or whatnot. But like I said, it's good always to discern uh, what, what what is going on because, I mean, you want to help a person, an individual, right? But you also want them to be honest. And all the time, you're not going to get that though either. Um, especially from a teenager, but I, I need to share all of this because, it, like I said, it was a, a lesson in it all, you know, to uh, to be obedient, to um, to listen, even to listen to uh, an individual and not just um, God, you know, but God, you always listen, of course, to him in the spirit, you know, because they are the ones that lead and guide you into knowing what to do for another individual, right? So, you know, um, that situation got squared away and they, you know, asked me different questions and whatnot uh, about, you know, if I had any questions or, or any, anything of that nature. And I really, I didn't because it was like, you know, it was really out of my hands. You know, it was, my hands was, were really uh, tied and God knows, you know, my heart and what I've always wanted for teenagers. And I know that he put me in that position for, um, um, that ministry, you know, because it's been like that since, since, like, since day one. You know, I had different ones coming to me, you know, and, and talking to me and asking me questions and whatnot, you know, and I always want to be there. But I always want to be there for, any, you know, anyone, right, uh, that God would have me to be there for, um, you know, because you have to be careful. You have to be led <clears throat> by the Holy Spirit as to, you know, uh, whoever it is to to go to, you know, whatever anointing God has set upon your life, you know, to um, to share, you know, and be led to um, an, an individual, right? So um, I am thinking that this is all because it went by like a breeze so fast. Because before I even got on here, it's just like, no, what am I gonna say? And it's weird because when you're in the bathroom, it's like a, a sacred place, right? And I was in the bathroom, and it was like I was reiterating everything in my head that, you know, he, the Holy Spirit was pouring out to me, you know, 
giving me at the time. And I said, well, I don't have a piece of paper or anything like that, you know. And I know that God always said, if I, if you open your mouth, I'll speak for you, right? And there again, it makes me feel so good to be obedient to God when, you know, they want me to do something for them. You know, it's just, it's an uh, overwhelming good, it's a good overwhelming feeling, you know, Russia feelings, right? So um, I always remember to be obedient, to listen to the voice of the Lord and, you know, just telling me um, when things like this happen, um, there again, like you said, your blessings are attached to it. Other people's blessings are attached to it as well. And I heard the other day, um, and this incident happened like a couple of days ago. It was two, three days ago, something like that, that nature. And I um, also heard um, the Holy Spirit speak to me swiftly, right? And um, it is finished. So, um, you know, whatever we do for Christ, only what we do for Christ shall last. And <clears throat> there again, if we skip out on what it is we um, should be doing for Christ, we can miss out either on our blessing or we can allow someone else or cause someone else to miss out on their blessing. And that won't be good. And I said, Lord, I don't want to be the one where people are attached to me and, um, you know, um, not me miss out, but um, me, we miss out on those souls, you know, because it is important for those souls just as well as ourselves. We're not, you know, we're not the only ones, um, you know, has to be uh, accounted to God. You know, there's other souls out there. And it, something clicked and hit me as while I was looking, like I was looking just now, about how, um, <clears throat> how I'm not exempt in anything, if I, especially if I'm not obedient. I'm not exempt. In anything anything could um, come upon me as well you know negatively you know and, uh, like uh, like for, for instance judgment or whatever you know if we're not obedient so I'm not exempt out of that you know so I know I have to realize that you know there again still is not about me and I have to do what it is that the Lord tell me even though we feel as though that people um, and this is another thing you can't worry about what people say uh, and how they feel, and if they don't believe that God is working in your life, you know, oh well, you know, um, you can't even worry about what they think and how they're going to perceive you, you know, of, you know, what it is that you're doing, how you, you know, think, how they think of you or whatever it is that you're doing. I think I'm reiterating it right, you know, like the um, video I had just done about a celebrity, you know, you know, God literally was showing me that face, that person's face, and the guilt on that person's face and whatnot, and how they, and I know I held that, that uh, too long, and that's another thing about, about being obedient, you can't hold off on your messages, you know, and I've seen somebody else's video like that, but this is the things that the Holy Spirit was reiterating to me about, you know, I don't want to be in a selfish manner, you know, because there again, it's not about myself, and if it's for um, these words, if these words are able to save a person, that's what I want uh, to do. I want to be able to save the person through the Holy Spirit speaking within me, you know, the words that they give me, you know, that I uh, reiterate outwardly to, you know, to the public. So that's all I believe that I want to um, share that, you know, the Holy Spirit was um, um, pressing me to share with you all, not actually really pressing, but, you know, put on my spirit to share. Um, so, because it's such a beautiful thing to be able to share things with the Lord. So, um, I'm going to um, leave it at this point right here. So, it's like 20 some minutes in. And um, you all be blessed. Uh, stay encouraged. Stay lifted up. Keep looking up. Keep always reading your word. The word of God is what um, replenishes, restores, leads, guides, strengthens, um, you know, all of the above. Because they are all to us. They are everything to us. Without them, we cannot live, move, breathe, any of it. So, um, and, um, yeah, it just comes to me about how people talk about, you know, how they're self-made and, you know, I self did this and I self, you didn't self do anything because God has those skills that he and she has given you and the Holy Spirit and Yeshua has given you to go forth in whatever it is that you needed to go forth in 
don't never always uh, not acknowledge him. It says to trust in him with all your heart, but lean not to our own understanding. This is what happens. We lean to our understanding about a whole lot of everything, and we shouldn't. But we should trust in him and lean not to our understanding. We have to lean to God's understanding because our understanding is not like God. His his uh, his thoughts are higher than ours, and his ways are above ours. So, you know, he sees, hears, knows all behind the scenes what we can't. So, um, then I'll leave it here now on that on that note. And um, you all just stay blessed and be encouraged, like I said, in Yeshua Jesus' name.